are going to love my guest. Emma Stark is a prophet. And uh, as a matter of fact, as a young child at six, you were in a home that didn't understand the supernatural. They loved God, but yeah. they didn't understand the supernatural. In fact, they think thought it was finished. Uh, but at six, it's almost like your eyes started opening. What did you see? Yeah, I mean, I'm fourth generation preacher, this godly legacy, but it was father and son and holy scriptures. We had no idea who the Holy Spirit was at all. And I remember being in school and seeing like in the canteen a whole wall full of faces watching me, which I now know were watcher angels and watcher demons. And I remember writing to my mom and dad saying, you know, what is this? What's going on. And of course, I grew up in Northern Ireland. It was the time of the Troubles. There were bombs. There was the IRA. There was shooting. My father was a clerk in, in the church, a clergyman at the time. And I would say to him, Dad, Dad, I think there's going to be a bomb uh, go off. Dad, Dad, I think so and so is going to be shot. And that phone call is going to be somebody telling you that this person in your church has been, you know, murdered. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Long for Truth. My name is Daniel Long. Sitting next to me is my lovely wife, Robin. Hi, everyone. Did the biblical prophets need to practice prophesying? Like, was there an Old Testament prophet school? Yeah, like, like was there an Old Testament prophet school or even a New Testament prophet school? Right. And do every Chris, does every Christian have the gift of tongues? These are a couple of the questions that we're going to be answering here on this episode. And it, this entire episode revolves around Emma Stark. Yes, Emma is a prophet and pastor uh, based in Glasgow, Scotland, and she was raised in Ireland. If you go to her website, which is Prophetic Scots, you can find out a little bit more about her. Um, and let's start there and read a little bit sure. about Emma. Emma Stark is a prophet who operates with authority and authenticity as she ministers and teaches around the world, giving clear and direct prophetic input to leaders, churches, and ministries, equipping the body of Christ to better hear from God and to apply his revelation to transform lives, communities, cities, and nations. Together with her husband, David, she leads an international apostolic hub a global network of prophetic ministers and one of Scotland's fastest growing churches. Yeah, she is connected with Bill Hammond. She is uh, a prophet within the New Apostolic Reformation. You can actually find her on um, uh, the Connections yeah, website. Uh, yeah, uh, NAR Connections website yeah. there. Um, yeah, so let's uh, go ahead and start with a clip. Shall we? Yeah. And uh, we're going to be looking at this clip where Emma says that every single believer, that includes you, can prophesy. And we should be prophesying. So check this out. Now, you, you got born again at about six. I was born again at six. However, at 18, something very dramatic happened to you. Yes. Well, that was when I got filled with the Spirit of God. And I left home. I'd gone to study at university. And I was just, oh, I was hungry. The Holy Spirit fell on me. I passed out on the floor. I went straight into this extreme open vision. There were chariots and angels, you know, coming out of the sky towards me. I was speaking in tongues, couldn't move for hours and had to be carried back to my room. And I thought, well, that happens to everybody. Doesn't that happen to everybody? <laughs> Doesn't everybody know when a bomb's going to go off? Doesn't everybody know when a, there's going to be somebody shot dead? You know, and it wasn't um, until later that I realized that is not everybody's experience. However, it should be it can be, and I believe that God is calling people into that place where they can be wildly encountering their God. Yeah, and so everybody claps there, right? And the problem is the Bible doesn't say that everyone can prophesy. It says nothing of the sort. And not even to mention, like, how much of your life is a wild encounter with God? 
Yeah. And, and here's another thing to ask. How many New Testament Christians do you see that had wild encounters with God, especially the kind of encounters that the folks of the New Apostolic Reformation claim to have. Exactly. It's They make this stuff out like this is something that should be happening in your life all of the time, every day. But the problem is it doesn't. And here's another issue. The stuff that these New Apostolic Reformation charismatic Christians do, none of these manifestations happen biblically. Nothing in the Bible that they talk about, that like Emma just talked about. Yeah, exactly. Get up in the morning, exercise, eat your breakfast, have a wild encounter with God. Have a wild encounter with God. Yeah, just just normal everyday thing. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't happen. Let's uh let's go ahead and continue with uh with the video. You said to me that every believer, whether they're six years of age or whether they're 96 years of age, if they have never operated in the supernatural or never operated in what is known as words of knowledge or prophecy, you're saying everyone can do this. Not only are you saying it, you equip people to do it. Oh, totally. And I think we have got to get over our nonsense. Okay. So (laughs) every single Christian, Robin, every single Christian should be able to prophesy. So again, if you are not prophesying, what is the matter with you? Exactly. You don't know how to do it. You Mm. need some, what did she call it? Equipping. Mm -hmm. Maybe you need to go to one of her schools. And here's the thing. Not one prophet in the Bible ever needed practice. Not one prophet in the Bible, or or, I'm sorry, needed school. Not one prophet. When God spoke to them, he spoke to them directly. He didn't need them to practice hearing his voice. Um, You had a really good example of that when you looked up how the Lord spoke to people in the Old Testament, didn't you? Yes, yes. Let's let's go over there. I'm going to share my screen really quickly um, and head over to uh, right here in, in Lagos. And all I did is I put in, in the search box here, my ESV, I put in, in quotations, the, uh, the Lord said, or Yahweh said, whenever you see the cow, all caps in the word Lord, that's Yahweh. So these, these people who God spoke to, they didn't have to go to school to learn how to hear the voice of God. God just spoke to them and they heard them. Did they buy books? They didn't even have to buy any books. Moses didn't have to sell his uh, his 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 brand new book, How to Hear the Voice of God. You know, it, it God just spoke and they responded. Um, so you have uh, uh, all throughout here, and the Lord said to Abram, no for certain. So God is, is literally speaking. And the Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb. And you can just keep going on and on and on here. Uh, the Lord said to Moses, uh, go into Pharaoh. I mean, this is God literally speaking. These men and, and women who heard from God did not have to go to school to hear the voice of God. The Lord said to Aaron, and we can go all the way down through uh the Lord said to Samuel. And so in keeping with that, there was no question about what the Lord was saying. There was no mistaking his message. And yep. there was no maybe getting a little bit of it wrong. No, not at all. Not at all. Right. And we have some, uh, well, I tell you what, let's go back really quickly and just find out what else Emma says here in this video. Okay. And then we've got, uh, we're going to refute what she says with with uh, the Bible humility and our low self-esteem that we just continually disqualify ourselves. You know, we're children of the Most High God and the Word of God is clear. You can all prophesy. A passage of scripture that is taken directly out of context and that is not what that passage of scripture means when Paul says that. So Robin, will you read that? Yeah, where are we? 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians 14. We're going to start in verse 26. What then, brothers, when you come together, each one has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Let all things be done for building up. If any speak in a tongue, let there be only two or at most three, and each in turn, and let someone interpret. But if there is no one to interpret, let each of them keep silent in church and speak to himself and to God. Let two or three prophets speak and let the others weigh what is said. If a revelation is made to another sitting there, let the first be silent. 
for you can all prophesy one by one so that all may learn and all be encouraged and the spirits of prophets are subject to prophets. Okay. So as you can see from that passage of scripture, Paul is not saying all believers can prophesy. He's talking about, uh, orderly worship. You can all prophesy in turn. All of the prophets who are there Mm -hmm. can prophesy. Exactly. One at a time. One at a time. So let's, uh, you want to head back over and finish it up? Sure. All right. Believe that it's not just about, oh, can you hear a wee sweet word and go there, there, you know, aren't you, uh, aren't you lovely and God just thinks you're awesome. I actually believe it's more than just activating people to hear God. It's activating people to be weapons in the hand of God. Where in the Bible does it say that we are to be weapons in the hands of God? Yeah. That Nowhere. Was, that was different. All right. So um, moving on, Robin. Yeah. Um, Why don't we read a little bit more from Emma's bio? Yep. Um, as one of the most trusted prophetic voices in the British Isles, Emma sits on prophetic roundtables and councils in Scotland, the UK, and Europe, and has twice ministered at the Global Prophetic Summit in Dallas, Texas. Emma and David are the founding directors of Glasgow Prophetic Center, a kingdom based manned by nearly 100 experienced prophetic ministers. Thousands from around the world travel to their center in Scotland to hear from God, receive freedom, and be trained and activated in prophecy, revelation, and spiritual warfare. So you can go to the prophetic center in Scotland and you can receive kind of a prophetic reading from prophets. If you go on their website, there's a calendar that you can try to Mm -hmm. get, schedule a visit for, um, and two or three prophets sit with you and kind of give you some prophetic words. And it really all sounds like, uh, almost like psychic readings to me. I was looking at some of this this morning and just kind of comparing the two. It really does sound like that. Do we have another clip? We do have another clip. Let's, uh, let's go right to it. Emma, you have the most sensational keys that you teach as who walk in the power and prophecy and words of knowledge. Tell me, one or two of these keys. Oh, some secrets, yes. yes. I think we pray in tongues a lot. And if you don't have the gift of speaking in tongues, you need to ask for it right now as you listen to this. Because tongues is like a motor, like a generator. And the more you speak in tongues, the easier it is to bring a word to the Lord and revelation. But more than that, because Jude says, build yourself up in your most holy faith. Okay, so there's another passage that is taken completely out of context from the book of Jude. And what really is ironic to me, especially when these 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 teachers like Emma Stark and, and others use the book of Jude as a proof text, um, is the whole book of Jude is talking about mm. false teachers, people like Emma Stark. It's, it's actually talking about Emma Stark. Yeah, you're right. So let's read that passage. Sure. Um, starting in verse 17, but you must remember, beloved, the predictions of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. They said to you in the last time, there will be scoffers following their own ungodly passions. It is these who cause divisions, worldly people devoid of the spirit, but you beloved building yourselves up in the most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. And have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. To others show mercy with fear, hating even the garment stained by the flesh. All right. What is really interesting about that passage of Scripture is where the Apostle Jude says that these people, these false teachers, they are void of the Spirit of God. They don't have the Holy Spirit. They don't have him. And yet in the very next verse, he says to Christians, pray in the Holy Spirit. I think that's really interesting that he first mentions the false teachers who don't have the Spirit, the lack of, the spirit. The lack yeah. of the spirit. So they can't pray in the Holy Spirit. They can't do they can't do anything. They're doing their evil, ungodly works apart from the Spirit of God. And he tells Christians after in the very next sentence, pray in the Holy Spirit. Which so many people, Danny, says mean it that it means praying 
in tongues. Yes. That's how we pray in the spirit. But the problem with that interpretation is, is that um, it's not a passage about tongues. And when it says pray in the spirit, uh, the, the, the Lutheran study Bible, I think, makes a gives a good explanation of that passage. And that is praying according to the word of God, which the spirit is the author of. So, so therefore it would be praying according to the will of God. Yes, exactly. Very exactly. Good. So, um, and then we have another passage, right? Yeah, we do. Romans 8, 26 and 27. Likewise, the spirit helps us in our weakness for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Mm. Yeah, and they like to use that passage uh, as well for tongues, you know, saying that it's tongues are a heavenly prayer language when, again, that passage has nothing to do with tongues at all. Absolutely. So let's continue on with Emma. Yourself up in your most holy faith. The more you pray in, by speaking in tongues, the more you pray in tongues, the more you get built up. It's a faith builder. We actually have evidence that when we get sick or unwell and we pray in tongues, the sickness just disappears like that because of the nature of how that gift starts to build up and establish you in strength. Okay, that is so unbiblical. Nothing in the Bible ever connects tongues and healing at all. That is just, that's, that's garbage. It's not true. That's the first thing. Yeah. And this whole idea, Robin, that everybody should be praying in tongues. We should all just be praying in tongues. Does the Bible even say that? I think the Bible does say something about that. 1 Corinthians 12. Yeah, let's look at 1 Corinthians 12. Uh, verses 27 through 31. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administrating, and various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but earnestly desire the higher gifts. And I will show you a still more excellent way. Okay, so right there, that passage makes it clear that number one, not all prophesy, which she had already said in the beginning that we should all be prophesying. And number two, not all speak in tongues. Paul is asking a rhetorical question there. Do all prophesy? The answer to that question is no. Do all speak in tongues? The answer to that question is no. And why? Because tongues and prophecy, they're a gift. They are a gift. Um, so they are given to specific members of the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit for whom he chooses to yes. give those gifts to. Not so, everybody gets right. got so, the gifts. According to Emma and those who believe what Emma believes, mm -hmm. we would be Christians who were not living to our full potential because we're yes. not prophesying and we're not speaking in tongues. But the key to this gift above everything else is practice. If you don't practice, you will always hit a glass ceiling. It does not matter how much you pray, how much you fast, unless you have got the, to the place where you put the English language or your language on the moving of the spirit, then you will always be capped. So I used to be, um, I worked in pharmaceuticals for years and I used to drive around in my car with my, um, my legal drugs in the back and uh, I would uh, drive past people at rep, rep speed and I was never going to see them. I was never going to talk to them. I didn't know who they were, but I would allow God to highlight somebody out the window of the car and I would start to put English words on what I felt the Spirit of God would be saying to them should I ever have a conversation. So I spent hours doing that, just practicing what does it sound like if you were actually in front of me. So when I came to the point with somebody with skin on, I already had hours of practice tucked under my belt. Now I am perpetually 
perpetually frustrated with my own prophetic level. I don't know a prophet who ever feels they've arrived. So I practice. I walk my dog in the park and I'm saying to the trees, trees, do you know what God is going to do in this area of Scotland? I fly in the airplane and I say, do you know what God is going to do over the nation I'm flying over? Why? Because I'm continually in this practice place so that when it matters, when it's a queen, when it's a politician, when it's a UN ambassador, that I have practiced enough to know what God actually thinks in an instant. Can you imagine the Old Testament or even New Testament prophets practicing their craft of prophesying? That last comment she made, I, I, I know that I've practiced enough to, to know what the Holy Spirit is saying. And going back to that Old Testament where you showed that page of the Lord said this yeah. and the Lord said that, I think if God wants to speak through you, he's going to be very clear. You'll hear him. He, he's he's God. He can do all things. He doesn't need to us to have to, to break through. Oh, I've, I've got so many things distracting me from hearing the voice of God. And it's not how it works, folks. It's not how that's not how it worked in Scripture. It's not how it works now. And what's a prophetic level, Danny? I, She's not happy with her prophetic level. Yeah, I have no idea what a prophetic level is. I don't think there were any levels of prophetic gifts within the body of Christ in the New Testament. And I don't think there were levels of prophets in the Old Testament. She also mentioned that she hasn't seen any prophet that has arrived. Yeah. Arrived where? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah. In other words, um, she, she's saying that not all, not all prophets are perfect. We, we're, we're not there yet. Well, if, well, if she means not all prophets are perfect in the sense that we're all sinners, then I would agree. But I would tell you this, if she means that we don't, you know, it, it takes a while and it takes practice for us to really be able to hear the voice of God. I would say that's unbiblical because, again, mm. if God wants to speak, you're going to hear him speak. He doesn't need you to try to break through some right. some stuff in your head or whatever be, to, yeah. to try to hear his voice more clearly. Not going to be a lot of confusion there. Not at all. Um, a little bit more from Emma's bio. David and Emma have been involved in leading healing ministries at the local and national level for many years, and they have apostolic responsibility for a variety of ministries, ministers, and kingdom businesses. They are ordained ministers with Christian International Europe under the leadership of Dr. Sharon Stone, part of the Christian International Ministries Network, founded by Bishop Dr. Bill Hammond. Yeah. So we're familiar with Bill Hammond mm -hmm. from the NAR Yep. Prophets video. Yep. I think you've met Sharon Stone on the NAR Prophets video, but I'm sure you're going to put a picture of her up right now. Sure. Um, one other thing that Emma Stark does is she will send you a daily email called Lion Bites. Lion, not not lying. <laughs> it should be forgive me. Look, it should be called lying that's bites because that's exactly what this crazy stuff is. So it, actually, it's a prophetic email from God. And I'm going to read you the most recent lion bite. Um, and this is what you get in your email. My heart is burning for my young ones whom my shepherds have ignored and rejected. My young ones are without my breath and walking in the path that I have not called them into because my shepherds have failed to direct them. I am calling my young ones to hear my voice and walk in the path of holiness and righteousness. Remove the confusing voices of the enemy trying to distract you to take the wrong path. Call my name, Yahweh, and I am waiting. Yes, just for you, my child. I'm nauseated listening You're to using that. Using the voice of God. Uh, that's in just your disgusting. Inbox. Yeah. I, I mean, don't like that. Yeah, not at all. I mean, and that, she's literally trying to sound like she's, um, you know, uh, like, like that's God speaking she's through channeling her. She's God. It's like Jesus Ooh. calling. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Okay. So we've got a video clip Another video on, and listen to what she says about her authority. Emma, you have told me the most amazing stories that you go with your husband and family to New Age fairs. Yes. You have dialogue with witches and warlocks. Um, 
Tell me about this. Oh, I love it, because we are so unimpressed with darkness. I and, like that. And we I have got to get that mindset. Say that again. You know, we Say are it. unimpressed with darkness. And I think when the Word of God says, at the end of time, when we look at Satan and we go, I is this it? I mean, is this the worm that tormented the world? <laughs> we need to get that Holy Ghost swagger right now that goes, I am a power-filled full of authority, supernatural force of God. And so, you know, the, the senior, the real deal heavyweight warlocks, they would cut their tarot card desks, they'd zoom past throwing their curses, and we would say, well, all the best with that because I'm not deserving of a curse, so that's not going to land on me. And we don't believe in the concept of demonic backlash because if I have all power and I have all authority, it means means the devil has none. And so I am not giving my authority away to Satan by believing he's got some kind of right over my life. So we would have people just flock to the stall and the head of the site Is that a new age fair? In the new age fairs, so much fun. And uh, <laughs> we would have this, uh, had this gentleman come and he was the head of the psychics or the Mystic Healing Association of Scotland. And he kind of sheepishly came and he said, I've tried every Reiki practitioner in the place and I'm in extreme pain. He said, I like your aura. And I'm like, my aura, that's the Holy Spirit well spotted. <laughs> and, uh, so I said, we're going to get your ankle well. We didn't even pray a word. It was just the atmosphere of God and the force of God that comes off his saints. And he's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And he was completely healed before he even sat down. So, that's terrible. Yeah, one of the things that you know that the whole thing is is so totally unbiblical. But one of the things that that she said in that um, uh, clip there mm -hmm. was that she had all authority and all power. Because if I have all power and I have all authority, it means the devil has none. You know, if I have all authority, she said, and all power. There is only one in the Bible who has been given all authority and all power. Yeah, we're in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, 18, forgive me. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I'm with you always to the end of the age. So who has all authority on heaven and earth in heaven and earth? Jesus Christ has all authority, not the believer and not especially no. Emma Stark. And what was this she said right at the end, Danny, that the, the atmosphere of the saints are healing people. Well, the the godly people I know must be doing something wrong then because I do mm -hmm. not see this taking place. It's not. It comes from the minds of these NAR folks. There's nothing in scripture about that whatsoever. Nothing. You're right. She also mentioned the Holy Spirit swagger. I don't know okay. what that is. That's that's <laughs> who could you imagine the apostles speaking that way? You, you, you know, stand, Peter standing up there saying that, um, you know, you people, you just need, you just need to have that Holy Spirit swagger about you. You have to, you know, uh, make sure that you're, you're walking in this, this great authority and, you know, you're not afraid at all of right. the devil. You got to have that Holy Spirit swagger. I did not either read anything in the New Testament that said Paul or Peter was unimpressed with darkness. Nothing, nothing about that. So, folks, Emma Stark is a false prophet. She is a false teacher. She is not communicating with God at all. And if you are following her or you think she's a prophet, you know, you, you need to repent of that and you need to stop listening to this woman. This woman is dangerous and she is not to be taken seriously. She is not to be followed. She's not to be trusted. Thanks for watching. Bye.